Yeah, my name is Adrian, Adrian. I'm from Spain, I'm from Madrid. I'm a front-end developer and a strong accessibility advocate. So you can find me mostly everywhere by my surname. So let's talk today about accessibility. So why is, okay, a lot of people ask me why is A11, why is the 11 letters between the A and the Y in accessibility? So this is the international acronym for accessibility. So um, why is so obvious that these examples are completely wrong? Poor this guy. Um, there is a tree in the middle of the ramp or there is stairs at the end of the ramp. And it's so wrong in the real world or maybe these examples. So someone comes in a wheelchair, press the accessibility button and surprise, surprise, there are stairs. So this in real world, it is so obvious that it's wrong. But why is not that obvious in the online world? So mm, imagine that you go to a web shop, an e-commerce application, and then you want to, to know your latest purchases. So you call the support, say, oh, I didn't find them, I didn't find them. So some they, can ask you s uh, they can answer something like, oh, you need to click in the button on the top right corner. Or you want to change your email address. And then they probably say, you need to click in the button with the engine icon. But for blind people, there is no top right corner. There is no button that looks like an engine. So we need to take care in consideration when we develop an application. But let me give you some numbers. In the world, last year, we were about 7.6 billion people. And more than 1 billion people live with some form of visually impairment. So. This is the audience that we want to gather, but we need to figure we need to understand that inside the audience there's people with with some uh, form of visual impairment. So developing web accessibility. I'm not going to talk about it today. I did a talk or, uh, about how to develop uh, and the best practices, um, and it's in, in uh, YouTube. But I'm going to talk today about testing web accessibility. So automate tests can free up your testing team, your QA team, but from testing every part of your application manually. But it's not magic. They cannot magically make your site accessible. And you we need to understand as well that only 20 to 50% of the issues can be found automatically. So we need to consider automated tests as part of the big testing process and manual tests are equally important. So I created a very small React application with three tiny components. One is the a button. The middle one is a fake button, which is an anchor link with the roll button. Uh, never do this. And there's an image. And in the main entry of the app, I put a lot of errors. So we want to work in this um, application. So how can we test the accessibility while we are coding? So since it's a React-based application, the Axe family, which is it was developed by Deque, is a company that created the Axe family, has this library, which is for React. You can install it as a dev dependency. And you need to be careful that this is only executed in an environment that is not production, so only in your development, developing uh, or development environment. And what you're going to see is when you run the application in the console log of your browser, you're going to see the issues that the engine is um, finding. Good thing for this one is telling you by severity level. So you can have from minor, moderate, serious, or critical. The other good thing is, is telling what is the error, where in the DOM structure is the error, and since Deque has a dequeuniversity.com is the documentation how to solve these problems, they will give you a direct link to this so you can read more about it and then you will know how to fix this issue. What else can we use while we develop? Linters. So ESLint has a plugin for accessibility and you include it in your project. You create the uh, ESLint TRC, so ESLint RC JSON. It could be, I mean, it would be that with line 12, so plugin 
JSX accessibility slash recommended, you are ex importing the recommended rules for accessibility. I prefer to specify my own rules. Uh, for example, there's one that I like. Uh, you can specify the name of the component that you want to test, so you don't have to test the whole application. Maybe you want to test component by component. And you will see the linting issues in the code editor. In this case, I use Visual Code. You will, use you will see them in any other editor. As well, you will see them in the terminal when you run the application with npm run or yarn run, depending on the package that you use. What else can we use while we code? And probably my favorite one, it is yest tags. Yest is a JavaScript library to create unit tests. Normally, you can create end-to-end -end tests, but unit tests is the most appropriate. And you install it as a dev dependency, as the, as the previous one. And you can write an accessibility test. So in this case, I wrote a very small test. What I want to test is the whole application. So I'm, I am importing the whole app. I pass the app to a string, and I pass this string over the Axe engine. And I'm expecting not to have any violation. So when I run the test, I can see, again, what is the error, where in the DOM is the error, and how can I fix it with the direct link to the Dequia University. In this case, uh, there is a bunch of images that doesn't have alt text. There is divs that have uh, on-click uh, events. They are custom roles that you cannot use. A bunch of other errors. Inputs without labels. A bunch of errors. So those are three tools that we can use while we code. But, okay, we could possibly say, okay, I'm done with the development, or maybe you inherit a full code base, so you can pass the test over the this, tech, this uh, code. So you can test the DOM in the terminal. Again, the Axe family has a terminal uh, tool to pass this test over an URL. So what you do is install it globally, and you can say Axe and the URL, and what it will do is to perform a full test over the whole application, and it will tell you again what is the error, where in the DOM, and the direct link to the documentation. Some other library that is very, very similar is PI11Y or PALI, and what it's doing is pretty much the same, so you can, you can install it globally, perform the, um, the action in the terminal, and again, it's telling you what is the error, what is the issue, where, what is the principle in the standards, which is new from Axe. So the WCAG, AAA, AA, you can see what is the violation, where is in the DOM structure, what is the element. The only thing that you don't have here is the direct link to the documentation. So you will have to be more proactive and Google it to know what is the the solution for this issue. The good thing for this one as well is that you can run it over localhost. But the PA11Y has a very cool extension or who another tool that is the CI. Because someone said, okay, I don't I need to perform actions to so many URLs. So I'm not gonna I don't want to do one by one in the terminal typing all the time. So you can create a JSON in your project. The and you can put an array of URLs, and the best for the best thing for this one, you can perform actions. So in the first one, there's uh, only the URL for Stack Overflow. In the second one, I'm putting a timeout of 50 seconds, and I'm taking a screen capture. So I can include this one in my report, in my accessibility report. Or I can create actions. So I can click in elements. I can expect elements to be loaded with a class or an ID. In this case, I take in a screen capture. I navigate to some other um, page, and I take a screen capture. A screen capture again. Again, you will uh, see how this is happening in the in the terminal. You know that you have three URLs. The first one is quite quick. The second one should be quick. The third one is the one that is taking the scan capture, navigate to other one, perform the, ac the, the whole test again, and take another screen capture. So it's taking a bit longer, but you can include this 
um, captures in your report. You can see the captures in the root of the project. Lighthouse. Lighthouse, it is a tool that it was developed by Google and is included in the uh, developer tools in your Chrome uh, browser, but you can install it as well in the terminal. So if you do lighthouse minus minus view and the URL that you want to perform the action, the other two libraries um, run a headless browser. In this case, we have a full instance of Chrome and it's going to perform a lot of actions, SEO test, accessibility test, perfor performance test, so you can see how they are doing responsiveness, um, no internet, slow internet, to have a bunch of KPIs. And with Dash Dash View, they create an HTML report that is saved in the root of your, of your um, project. And you can see as well where are the issues and how to solve the issues. So those are tools that we can use to test the DOM. Again, main features, I think I, I already mentioned them, but the first one, the Arc CLI, you can have direct link to the documentation at Daco University. The PI11Y, I like it because you can perform actions over the websites that you are analyzing. And Lighthouse can um, provide you with a visual report and you can export it as well with path output to JSON or CSV so you can automate this uh, in your in your automate test build. What else? We said that only 20 to 50 percent of the of the issues can be found uh, over automate tests. So manual tests are equally important. So how can we test in the browser? Um, there are a bunch of extensions, either Chrome or Firefox, that you can use. So I will show you some. Again, X family, you can perform an action, uh, perform a test over the browser, is under the developer tools. You can see X. And what it's doing is analyzing the whole website, the same as the terminal one, and it's giving you a more visual um, um, pro um, uh, report about what is wrong. Again, what, where, and how to solve the error. ARC Toolkit, very, very similar. It's gonna, it's under the developer tools as well. Uh, it's gonna perform tests for or all items in the website, so images, links, headings, and in this case, I'm clicking in links. You can see some uh, images uh, with uh, sorry images, yeah, with no alt text. You can click, and then you can see it in the in the code, and as well, you can see it in the window. So you can see that these three images doesn't have any alt text. Uh, accessibility insights. So top order in your website has to be consistent with the content of your of your site so with this um, tool you can create a tab map so you can see that this is the order you're tabbing and this is the order that the user will see in when when it navigates through the tab because um, uh, visually impaired people normally don't use uh, a mouse. Um, either if they are fully blind, they will use a screen reader. Uh, maybe you forgot your glasses at home, then you want to tap and see the outline on the buttons and links. So this is the map that is going to, to follow the user. Wave. Well, actually this tool is, is rewritten and is new since half a month, a month ago. And is probably the most complete one. Again, it's an extension. It performs a whole test, and it can tell you where is the error. And you click, you go directly in the window. You can um, see the structure of your heading, because H1 is the most important. Then you have to have an H2 and then H3. You can see the contrast radius of your buttons or links. Uh, another thing that I like is you can turn off every style and you can see if your the content of your website is is uh, coherent and you can see as well the code of your website so you have a lot of information with this tool so no coffee as well apart from test 
we need to simulate what and how uh, someone with a visually impaired can see our website. So no coffee can simulate this case that I told you. I mean, maybe you forgot your glasses at home and then you will see the website like this. Maybe more. You can as well uh, simulate uh, floaters. Um, you can simulate as well color blindness. So maybe someone is um, has protanopia, so the colors are different, uh, or dif definitely no colors. You know, you can simulate all the things, or really illnesses in in the in the eye. So you have peripheric vision, or only half vision, or floaters, and you can you can definitely simulate the size of the floaters. So it's very good to simulate how someone will see your website. So those are the tools that they that I show you and I recommend you to use. How to test while you are coding, how to test after you think you're ready or maybe you inherit again a code base. And we talk about manual test and automate test as part of a full test uh, process. Um, we need to include these processes in our development process. Um, so I totally recommend you to use these tools. Uh, mm, the application that I created is under my GitHub. Uh, and the slides of this tool is under speakerdeck.com. And I want to leave with a couple of sentences. Mm, one that I really like, and it is not just about disabled users being able to use your website, it's about everyone being able to access your website. Again, you forgot your classes at home. I personally dropped my, my Mac at the office last month, and I my screen is completely black. So, and I if I need to buy a flight, I need to access this website listening to the website. Um, you have kids and then you have your kid in your one hand and you need to use, you cannot use your mouse, so you need to tap and uh, w you need to navigate through the website with tap key. All these possibly possible use cases, anyone can have them. So it's not, again, it's not making the website accessible for visually impaired people, but for everyone. Because accessibility is not a feature. It needs to be uh, included in our development process. We need to understand that accessi the, the responsibility for accessibility is not on the developers. It needs to be in the whole team, from project manager to UX designer to the CEO of the company uh, to testers to developers. Everyone needs to be responsible for this because it's something that it affects, it affects all in the world. Thank you.